Now let us open our eyes and interview this man. Abu Qudama. Who's Abu Qudama? Abu Qudama is a man who gave his life for the sake of Allah. Abu Qudama is a man who said, my life belongs to Allah. And then while this man sitting there, you also see everybody coming to him. Everybody getting closer to him. And then they sit around him in a circle. And then they waited until he turned. And then now they said, Ya Abu Qudama, we have questions. Can you answer the question? And Abu Qudama turned and he said, Yes. And a young man, he asked him a question. فَقَالَ يَا أَبَا قُدَامَ أَخْبِرْنَا بِأَعْجَبِ شَيْءٍ رَأَيْتِ Tell us the most amazing thing that you ever witnessed in your life. You a man who traveled, a man who went everywhere for the sake of Allah. You met people, you met enemies, you met friends, you met family members, you travel, please. We don't want to listen everything that you, you heard or see. We just want to know the most amazing thing that you've ever seen. The most amazing, amazing that you ever witnessed. He said, I'll tell you that. Now listen to the story of Abu Qudama. Listen to this man. He said, I'll tell you. He said, I went in a small village, small city. And in the city, there was a masjid, a small masjid. And he said, we were going to a place called Tarsus. And this was the boring city between the Muslims and the enemy of Islam at that time. And there was war taking between these two countries. And he said, we were going there because we were soldiers. And in my way to the border of my country, he said, I stopped by that city. And in the masjid, after Salat al-Isha, I stood up and I said to the people, Ya ayyuha nas, ittaqullah. Ya ayyuha nas, O people, fear Allah and be part of this and join us to and help al Islam. He said, Not too many people responded. And I went and I rent a room for the night. And he said, Subhanallah, in the middle of the night, if I eat a Someone is knocking on the door. And I said to myself, who could that be? I'm a stranger in the city. Nobody knows me. And nobody knows who I am or where I am. Who could this person be? He said, I get a little bit concerned, so I opened the door. And what did he see? قَالَ فَإِذَا بِإِمْرَأَةِ a lady in the middle of the night, a woman came to my door wearing hijab, hijab from head to toe, wearing niqab. And when I opened the door, I was shocked. And I said to her, Ya Amatullah, what are you doing? فقالت, Anta Aba Qudama. Are you Aba Qudama? I said, Ya Amatullah, or oh, the servant of Allah, what are you doing? She said, Ya Aba Qudama, ma hakada da'ba salihin. She said, Ya Aba Qudama, this attitude of yours is not the attitude of the righteous. It's not. And he said, I said to her, Ya Amatullah, or oh, the servant of Allah, what do you request? She said, Ya Aba Qudama, I'm a single person, and I'm a woman, I cannot fight like you do. And I have no money to give for the sake of Allah. 
Ya Aba Qudama, take this. And she gave me a sack and she ran away and walked away. And I opened the sack. And in it is a letter saying, Ya Aba Qudama, I have nothing to offer except my hair. And I cut it for you to tie you on your horse. And when you're riding your horse for the sake of Allah, I want Allah to look at you. Look at, your, uh, look at my hair and say, that hair belongs to my servant so and so. And perhaps Allah would be pleased with me. Yaqulu Aba Qudama, I was shot by the behavior of this lady. And I said, may Allah forgive you, so I put it aside. In the morning, he said, we walked away and near the palace of a man who was one of the wealthy people of a Muslim. He said, فَإِذَا بِيَنْ All of a sudden, a young man, or a writer, I should say. And the writer is saying, يَا أَبَا قُدَامَ Ya Aba Qudama, and he's writing his stories and he's coming so fast. And he said, Ya Aba Qudama, I ask you by Allah, wait for me, wait for me. And the young boy, I said to the people who are with me, proceed, continue, I'll deal with this man. And the man jumped out of his horse and he's, you know, panting and he's breathing hard. And he said, Alhamdulillah. Who oh, allow me to see you. Alhamdulillah that I was able to catch up with you. Ya Aba Qudama, ah, let me come with you. Let me go with you. And he said, this man is covering his face. And I realized that voice is a voice of a young man. And I said to him, we remove the, the fill out of your face. For in kunta rajulun akhadnaq. If you are a man, we will take you with us. But if you are a kid, we will send you back to your parents. And he removed, he says, Subhanallah, the only thing that I can compare the face of this young man is the moon, the 15th of Islamic calendar, the full moon, light, radiance coming, shining out of his face. And I said to him, you're just a boy. Go back to your mother. Go back to your parents. And the young boy, he was shocked, taken back. يَقُولُ يَا أَبَا قُدَامَ Wallahi, my father died for the same cause that you're dying for. That are you going for? يَا أَبَا قُدَامَ Don't turn me back. My mother has sent me. فَقُلْتُ no. And he said, Ya Aba Qudama, Wallahi inni la rajul, Wallahi I am a man. Yani look up this, the mentality of that young man. He said, Wallahi I'm a man. Inni hafidun li kitabillah. I memorize the book of Allah. See their status. The way they think was completely different. To be a man means Learn the book of Allah. Memorize the book of Allah. Then apply the book of Allah. Now you are a man. Not because we see the facial hair in your face. Not because your voice became deep. Not because, mashallah, you're a strong man. And you went to the gym and every day, mashallah, you know, you... No. It's the principles. It's what you think of yourself. You know, this sometimes they teach us in psychology, in the in, the, in this system, and they said, even when they're trying to fool women, and they say, oh, no, 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 eat whatever you eat, you know, and do this diet, and, this. and they tell you, it's not what you eat, it's what you think of the food that you're eating. And I will tell you, it's not how you look from, your, from outside, it's what you think of yourself. He said, don't send me back. For Wallahi, I am memorized. I memorized the book of Allah. Standards. 
And he said, I had no choice. So I said to him, stay close to me. Stay close. He said, when we ride on our horses, he's riding, but he's reading Quran. When we walk and let the horses rest, because in Islam, animals write was established by the Prophet Sallallahu So they have rights, so they knew the horse themselves need rest. So he said, when we walk, he's remembering Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He said, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, he said, the people said, we are fasting and we need to make for iftar. We need to make iftar. We need to make something that we can break our fast with, food. And the young boy said, I'm not fasting. You know, I'm not fasting. I'll serve you. You guys rest. So we said, no, 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 you're also tired. You know, you're not experienced. He said, no, 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 I want to make the food for you. So he, so we said to him, well, go away then and keep the smell of the food away from us. And then, when he did that, the time of Salat al-Maghrib was getting closer. The time of Salat al-Maghrib was getting closer and closer and closer. And then the people said to me, he said, Abba Qudama, Ya Abba Qudama, go see this young boy that you sent for food, for we don't know, we're starving now. We don't know what he's doing. So he said, I follow the foot the print of the young man, and I realized this young man, he started cooking. And while he was waiting for the food, he got tired, and he just slept right next to the food. Now imagine the young boy, young man, 16, 17 years old, now sleeping, peaceful. He said, I felt sorry for him. And I said to myself, you know, I'll finish the food. And I'm looking at him. And then the young boy, in his sleeve, he smiled. And then he smiled bigger. And then I said, I'm not going to disturb him. And he started moving things. And he woke up. I'm sorry. I, I forgot. The, I'm going to finish it. No, you're not going to finish the food. Just relax. He said, no, I want to finish. He said, I will let you finish the food under one condition. What is it? You tell me. Why were you smiling in your dream? You were smiling. You know, why were you smiling? And that young boy, all of a sudden, his face just dropped. And he looked away. And he said, Ya Aba Qudama, leave it alone. I said, no, Wallahi. I'm not going to leave it alone. And I'm not going to let you cook. That's it. You don't want me to. That's it. He said, Ya Aba Qudama. Don't deprive me from the ajr of cooking for the sa'imin. He said, no, if you want to cook, tell me about what you saw. He said, it's between me and my Allah, my Lord. However, I'll tell you. He said, I saw myself being killed right here. I saw myself at the qiyamah start the day of resurrection came. I saw myself that I'm entering paradise. And I saw myself that I am going to enter my palace, my Jannah, my, 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 my Firdaus. And he said that when I enter, and I saw Hur al Ain, young ladies standing there, so beautiful that I never ever thought human being can be that beautiful. And one of them said, the most beautiful of all said, this is the husband of Mardiya. This is the husband of Mardiya. And I approached her because she was so beautiful. In paradise, we're all going to be beautiful and handsome. But it's extremely beautiful. So I said to her, are you Mardiya? Are you my wife? She said, no, no, no. I'm one of the servants of Mardiya. You want to see her? Come with me. He said, she took me to a palace, a different palace. I cannot describe. And I walk into this palace. 
It is so beautiful. The bed, it's so beautiful. And there is Marliya there. He said, Wallahi, if it was not for Allah, I would have died from the beauty of that woman. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he said, I said, are you Marliya? She said, yes, I'm your wife in paradise. And I got closer to her because I want to touch her. And she said, no, ya habibi, ya zawji, abadakallahu anil khana. May Allah protect you from imperfections. Mawhiduna ghadan. I'll meet you tomorrow, Dhuhr time. He said, then I realize tomorrow I will die. Abba Qudama said to this young boy, Boy, if you die before me, intercede on my behalf and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me. He said, I'll do it. He said, that day came. And when that day came, he said, yes, that boy was killed. Or at least we lost him. And when we lost him, and everybody was concerned about themselves and the others, I was only concerned about the young boy. So I looked and I looked and I looked, and while I'm walking in, in, a, in a pool of blood, people died left and right. And I'm asking, have you seen that young boy? And nobody is willing to identify that young boy. فَإِذَا بِصَوْتِ A weak voice came from behind, saying, Ya أَيُّهَا nas, O people, please call Abba Qudama for me. Call Abba Qudama for me. And then they, he said, I heard a voice, so I ran to him. I threw myself next to him. فَقُلْتُ يَا, ya بُنَيْ O oh my son, I'm here. And I looked at his body and it's almost cut into pieces. And I start wiping, taking the end of my soul, and I start wiping the blood out of his face, saying, what have you done to yourself? And the young boy, he responded, Ya Abba Qudama, don't use your soul. My soul is already bloody. Use my soul. Forget about yours. He said, Wallahi, I cried more. I cried more. And he grabbed me and he said, Ya Abba Qudama, all praises due to Allah who allowed me to see you before I die. Ya Abba Qudama, my will, please take it, up from, take it from me. He said, what is it? He said, go back to my mother. He said, I don't know your mother. Qala subhanallah. You don't know the lady? I said, what lady? He said, you don't know the lady who gave you the, the sex? He said, what is that? He said, the lady who gave you her hair. He said, that's your mother? He said, yes. She told me, she grabbed me by the shoulders and she put my head, my head on my head and she said, Ay bunay, oh son, you are a gift that I give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Son, if you die and you meet your father, ask him to intercede for me. And then she grabbed me and she hugged me tight. And she said, Ya Allah, this is the best that I have. He is yours. Ya Allah, make him among the people of paradise. Ya Allah, he's yours. That is my mother, he said. He said, however, my mother would not believe that Allah accepted her gift. So take whatever you can take from my soul, from my hair, and say this is from your son. And ya Abba Qudama, you will also see a sister of mine, nine years old, sorry, six years old. When I leave, she cries. And when I come, she laughs. And last time when I was leaving, she said, don't stay out for long. Comfort her and tell her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you. So I said, Abba Qudama rahimahullah, I don't know what to do. 
I went to the city and I looked through the streets of the houses, through the streets of the, of the city, and I didn't know where to go, but I was searching aimless, aimlessly. And finally, I found a house in front of the house is a young lady. Every time she sees a man who came from a distance, a traveler, she said, Ahi, is my brother with you? Is my brother with you? And I was, everybody said, I don't know your brother. I don't know. Finally, I walked into her and said, is your mother home? She said, where's my brother? I said, call your mother. And she called her mother, and I recognized her voice. And the lady said, are you here to give me my condolences? Or you hear me here to give me a good news? She's, I said, what, is, what does it mean? She said, if you tell me, you came to, here to tell me that Allah accepted my gift, that's a good news. If you tell me my son is back, that is a condolence. Because Allah did not accept my gift. And the young lady, the young girl is looking at me and at her. And when she realized her brother passed away, she also went down and she died on this spot. And the mother, she grabbed her child inside and she said, Ya Allah, accept them and accept me. If on the day that you will, when you meet your Lord, if your status is that, that you're so happy to meet Allah, then glad tidings for you. If it's not, I will say, be like that lady, raise your child, children in righteousness, and teach them how to be a better Muslim.